install the transom mount, you'll need to find the exact center of the transom. If your transom has a pitch slash angle to it, you may find it difficult to get the propeller at the correct depth slash angle. We recommend using a shim between the kit and the transom to make the kit mount as horizontal as you can. So if you kind of look at my situation here, I have an angle. Um, so this is going to need to be more like that, which means I need shims, just like it says. So this is what we're going to do. So you can see this isn't level, but uh, it's, about as, it's closer to level. So uh, this is adjustable, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, and the directions have said to add the pivot bearing. Well, it's already on there. Um, so you're gonna wanna unscrew this right here. And we're gonna add this base to the mount. Wow. With the Predator 420cc motor, uh, there's a keyway on it. We have to take that off and put that aside until later. The power takeaway shaft or the PTO, which it says in the instruction book, it's called PTO. It's abbreviated as the PTO. We have to change that to the 12 o'clock position. We're going to add our uh, long tail shaft right here, and that's going to be in the 12 o'clock position as well. Um, but there's a few things we're going to do first. If you're like me, you're always working by yourself. So I kind of came up with this way to hold this heavy shaft um, so I can kind of work with it when I, when I screw it onto the motor. So you can use multiple things to do this. You could just use a spar in your garage or whatever you have. But uh, if you have two people, that's great. If you don't, know, some rig like this can help. A few things we're going to do, though, before we install this with some grease right from the directions. So we're going to insert these, but before we do that, we're going to fill the PTO housing here with marine grease. And we're just going to fill that, we're just going to fill that cavity. So here we go. Okay, here we go. So that's filled with grease. We do have the PTO in the 12 o'clock position and uh, permanently installed key there in the 12 o'clock position as well. So that should kind of help us align these. Nicely, I can pull this and my scaffolding has wheels on it so it goes kind of right to where we need it to go. Okay, so this part takes a little bit of doing, kind of some adjustment. It's very important to have that uh, keyway and in the 12 o'clock position uh, to match with the key on the long tail. So uh, you got to have the grease in there and you're going to have to work with it. I did add this uh, wrench here kind of very gently on the end here to kind of adjust the, the shaft so it would fit. It did take a few 
uh, trial and error to kind of get it right. But uh, it doesn't take a ton of pressure. You don't want to force this, but it does take a little bit of pressure to, to get it on there and get it in. But once you get it aligned, it's going to slide right on. You don't need a hammer or anything like that. So it says in the beginning of this manual, you know, nothing requires any force. And this really didn't. So again, just like before, you don't want to uh, force any of these parts, but um, let me add some anti-seize here. So this comes with a uh, washer and a lock washer. Not forcing anything here. This just easily, easily goes on there. Okay, a couple things here. You want to just verify that your grease zerks are in the 12 o'clock position, this one and one down there. And the, you also want to tighten these in diagonal fashion. So I'll tighten this and this, and then this one and this. I'm going about 12, uh, 10 to 12 foot pounds here. Okay, this will save you a little time. Make sure you see how the hole's there. Make sure that's going to the sides. Work that in there. Make sure it's on the sides. And then that'll go right through. Okay, so we're going to want to remove these two screws. There's one here, and there's one further down the long tail shaft. So we're going to want to remove these and put in six millimeter grease zerks. Uh, you're going to want to keep your screw though, because after we fill this, we're actually going to want to remove the grease zerks and put the screws back on so water doesn't potentially get in there, at least on this one. We could probably get away with it on the other one, but at least on this one that's in the water all the time, we're going to want to put the screw back on. This one's gonna be on for a little while. This one's not coming off. So I am gonna put a little bit of the blue Loctite, not the red, the blue. Loctite on there, just to keep that in there. So now we're going to do the throttle cable. In order to get to that, we have to remove the air filter and the air filter housing. So we'll take these off. And then we got a couple of screws right here and these screws on top and I think they're 10 millimeter.
We want to remove the throttle stop screw labeled number two completely. And then we want to remove the uh, screw labeled number one and keep that for later. Oh well, you can see it, but we are going to thread this through that hole. So I've got a wrench on the back side. Now I'm going to unscrew this until I've got a space in that circle that I can get the wire through. And there we go. So I'm going to leave that loose for a second. I'm going to take this thing that we moved earlier, the number one screw, and put that back in place. Very important to loosen the throttle screw here so we can verify that the throttle is in fact engaging both at full throttle and uh, coming off the throttle. So um, this screw is very important. You gotta kind of find the, the sweet spot, you know, not too tight to where it co doesn't come back or not too loose to where, you know, it may come off, but uh, you'll find it. Then you can adjust the tension here by these screws. This is kind of like on a on a bicycle if you've ever adjusted those. Reinstall the air filter and air filter housing as before. Okay, so we're working on the kill switch. The first step in the mud skipper directions are to locate the black wire. Well, there's multiple black wires, but uh, this is the one we're looking for. And on this motor, you can kind of tell because it's got this little uh, plastic piece right here. So. There we've located that black wire. Now the second step in the mid skipper directions are to take the your clippers off of the red wire directly off the kill switch and clip it. Now I don't like I don't like clipping anything, um, but uh, this is what it says to do. So we're going to we're going to go ahead and clip this just like that. Okay, so this is the wire. This is the black wire. Okay, this is the scotch lock connector. In the directions, it says to attach this to the black wire. Okay, so the scotch lock connector is attached. Okay, so we're going to push the red wire in. Make sure that's in all the way. I'll turn this around so I can kind of see it. The red wire, and then we're going to, with our pliers, we're gonna crimp down on this. All right. So that's in there. And now we're going to lock this around. And that is gonna lock. And so now that's what we got. So this is our ground wire and I'm gonna attach that. It can go to any bolt on the body of the motor, so I'm gonna attach that right there. So now I could put oil in this and gas and fire this up. However, I do want to add a battery, so we're gonna go that extra step. So I've added a battery. I didn't add this step-by-step uh, -step procedure to my, my video here, but uh, I'll just kind of briefly go over this. Uh, I used my ammo box and um, I added a plate, a wood plate, um, to the two handle screws here. And got a Walmart battery and some connectors I got uh, on Amazon. And I added it to the positive lead of the starter relay right here. Um, and that's all you need to do. And then you need to add the negative to one of the main bolts of the, of the engine. So um, didn't go over this, it's not required. It's just kind of an additional feature. Uh, the Predator 420cc has a 
a key start, so I wanted to make sure I utilized that. But again, it's not required, and we'll just kind of go over that as part of the process, but uh, that's what I did as far as the battery. But uh, Let's go to the next step. Let's add some oil and some gas, and we'll do the break-in procedure. Okay, we got 1.16 quarts, so we'll go ahead and uh, add that. Another factor here is I want to make sure it's at the right spot and it's right where we want it. Okay, so here's the break-in start for the Predator 420cc motor added to our John boat. Uh, we've added the oil, 1.16 quarts. It's full of fuel, so we're ready to go. We've got our choke on start. We've got our fuel on. We got it at idle, and here we go. The first start, that's pretty good. Running a little rough, maybe we'll take it off show here in a second. That's pretty good. I gotta tell ya, these Predator engines are called Predator clones uh, to the Honda motor. So, this is the initial start, but uh, Everything looks pretty good. So I actually don't want to get too close to this blade, but my initial thoughts, I'm totally impressed. One thing I'm really impressed about is the how quiet it is. Um, it's at idle but it's not like a lawnmower or a chainsaw. I don't know if it comes over on the, on the camera here, but it's pretty quiet, so I'm impressed. for a water testing all right so we got our John boat ready to go we got our 12 foot boat we got the 420 cc predator motor and we got the mud skipper mount system all fixed up and ready to go for the water now the reason I have this 12 foot boat is and with this big 420 cc motor is because I'm on a really small a shallow rocky river with a lot of current. So I wanna be able to stand up and see the rocks in front of me, but I wanna have the power in the motor to fight that current. It can vary depending on whether there's rain or not. Sometimes it can be really strong. I've gotten caught before. I'd love to do the cool stuff you see these, guy do, these guys do in Florida with this, uh, with this long tail motor, but uh, someday I wanna do that, but that's not what we're doing here, so. Uh, stay tuned. The next thing is to get this boat on the water. <laughs> 